Hi, welcome to Perry Pierre Podcast. I'm your host, Perry Pierre, and this is the first episode. My goal with this podcast is to inspire and inform, educate and entertain. I used to use this podcast as a tool to seek the right answers for movie lovers and the next generation of filmmakers and actors. Our guest today is Peter Ellenis. Peter is a friend of mine. We got our MFA in cinematic media production together at Pepperdine University. And um, I don't know anybody else who's seen more movies than, than, than this guy. So, Peter, welcome. Uh, it's great to have you. Oh, uh, no. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Today, we're going to talk about American movies in the 80s. Okay. So, we're going to talk about Reganite Cinema, new filmmakers that came out during that decade, old ones that continue to make waves, the Brad Pat, and so on. So, before I start, Peter, I know you've seen a lot, a lot of movies. <laughs> But somehow your ultimate favorite, I'm talking about the, that one movie that you watch over and over again, is Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Back to the Future, which actually came out in the 80s as well, yeah. 1985 to be exact, was directed by Robert Zemeckis, um, who also directed Flight, one of my mm-hmm. favorite movies. Oh, yeah. What is it about Back to the Future that makes you want to watch it over and over again? Uh, it's that nostalgia. I grew up watching that film. I mean, it's just such an amazing film. It's, I also think Marty McFly is one of the greatest protagonists you have, actually, in a film. Right. Somebody anybody can really relate to, an amazing, like, amazing, relatable character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you just want to go on this journey with them. Right. And so he kind of goes through the 1950s and then, of course, their future, and then even the Wild West. It's an amazing, an amazing journey. And I feel like, especially for boys growing right. up, young boys, right? I feel like so many of us wanted to be Marty McFly. Some of us kind right. of related with Marty McFly. You know, like I said, it's one of those films I can, you know, I have the Blu-ray, I have the VHS, I have the DVD version, <laughs> but I can literally, if it's on television, I will sit down and watch, watch it constantly. Yeah. So there was a lot of uh, travel, you know, back in times and stuff like that in the 80s. Why do you think that was? Well, yeah. And that has a lot to do with kind of Reagan cinema, uh, mm-hmm. like Reaganite cinema. I mean, here's the thing about Reagan cinema. And I, I definitely recommend if you guys can pick up the book, Hard Bodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, by Susan Jeffords. I have it right here. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, I mean, there's so much that goes into it. That's, it's kind of really, really fascinating, but just kind of really the overview of Reagan cinema was that, you know, we're coming off and I, I just want to say this right from, from the get go as well. You know, it doesn't matter what your politics are, or, right, you know, right. that, that, you of know, course. <laughs> you can do whatever, but you know, kind of the way mirror, you know, films mirror mm-hmm. what, you know, society is going through. And exactly. I think what's really interesting is that, you know, Reagan cinema was that, you know, people were, kind of a different politics back in the 70s, the Jimmy Carter years. People right. kind of viewed, you know, if you want to say Americans or America, kind of more of a weaker nation. Mm-hmm. Again, no politics involved right, in that, but Reagan's whole message about going back to the good old days, kind of reestablishing America in the in the world, kind of as a like a leader and a strong power. And I think what happened, what's found very interesting is that our films in those 80s really represented that kind of message that Reagan was really, really saying. Right. For instance, I think, you know, one of the Rocky movies, when they go to like Southeast Asia and then the, the whole message was like, hey, this time we get sure. to win, yeah. you know, so. Well, and even something like Rambo, because you're going off. Right I mean, sorry, sorry, still, Rambo, Rambo, yeah, Rambo, Rambo, sorry. If I'm correct, Rocky was in the 70s. Uh, right, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean Rambo. <laughs> Rambo, just kind of really coming into the 80s. And Rambo's kind of an interesting story, right? You have Rambo kind of return to this small town. He's kind of seen the world. He's lived it, right? Mm-hmm. And then this kind of small town, kind of what America was before Rambo, you know, kind of came back. He didn't, he didn't know how to fit back into the puzzle that was created, right. you know, the American creation of this puzzle. Mm-hmm. And Rambo, he can't adapt. And instantly what happens is the town turn on him. He's kind of forced into the woods, but then he has to defend himself. And I always loved the you know, line, right? They drew first blood. Right. right? You know, because <laughs> the idea was that, yeah, he tried to adapt, but he couldn't. And the whole thing with the Reagan cinema was this idea of hard bodies. Right. Right. Physically, but also mentally. And of course, yeah. macho you had, men. You had, yeah, men. You, had, you had characters like Rambo, who of course had the real hard body image, which was one of the elements. But then of course, you know, you had him being able to literally take down an entire town and right. the US military yeah, and stuff like that. And uh, it was a really, really good representation of what Reaganite cinema was, you know, kind of an early introduction to Reagan cinema. And again, that representation of, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be masculine? And it doesn't have to be necessarily man, but what does it mean to be masculine equals what does it mean to be American? Right. Right. So yeah. Rambo, yeah, Rambo is a really great first representation of yeah. that. So let's talk about like favorites a little bit here. So, okay. so let's talk about like seven favorite 
movies that came out in 1980s. So here, here are my seven uh, favorite movies that came out in 1980s. So the first one is Coming to America. Like this yeah. is the, <laughs> this is my favorite. You know, with Eddie Murphy. Second one is Do the Right Thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what's interesting actually, Do the Right Thing. That scene, that scene at the end, was when the African American guy, oh, yeah. when he was being choked, like it reminds me a mm -hmm. lot of like you know what happened with Eric Gar uh, Garner in New York. So the third one is another Eddie Murphy film, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> um, when I watch it now, I'm like, oh, I know this place, I know that place. And then number four, Karate Kid. Oh, that's right, the Karate Kid. That's... <laughs> yeah, Karate Kid. Uh, uh, again, really good representation, right? Yeah, Reagan cinema. Yeah, that... exactly. Yeah. Number five, The Color Purple. Oh, yeah. And then number six, Commando. Command? Okay. Well, number six in, is Commando. I mean, in number, in number seven is Kickboxer. Kickboxer? I used to watch Kickboxer as a teenager, man. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, I want to I wanna do karate and stuff like that. So, um, so <laughs> these are, like, my favorites. I would probably say, like, a bonus one is La Bamba. Okay. I remember watching La Bamba, man. I was like in the 90s though, but mm -hmm. but after watching it, I was like heartbroken. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I'd say that my, that's my bonus. So other than Back to the Future. So Back to the Future would be course. one for me somewhere there. Let's see. I also really liked like films that came out in the 80s. Also really loved one of the films that I, I think is actually one of the best films ever made is actually Amadeus. Right. I that came one, out. An Oscar too. One, yeah. Best Picture, Best, best picture, Actor yeah. as well, mm -hmm. F. Murray Abraham. Again, one of the few times actually two actors were nominated for Best Actor, F. Murray right. Abraham and Tom Holsey, right? Right. I think that film is fantastic. And my only concern, my only problem with that film was actually in English. Right. Because I felt like it was so authentic otherwise. Right. And then, you you know, you hear them speak in English. Yeah. Uh, so Amadeus is there for me. I really like Stand By Me. Again, kind of when I was talking about Back to the Future, right? This whole kind of like being able to relate mm -hmm. to the characters. And Stand By Me, funny enough, too, is I wouldn't exactly call it a Reagan film. Mm-hmm. But again, it's about boys and how they grow up and, you know, what does it mean? You know, they're kind of getting bullied by the Kiefer Sullivan character, the bully of the town, right. right? Yeah. So what does it mean to kind of be young and kind of be a boy? And what do they do? They go off and find a dead body. Right. right. That's like their journey. <laughs> I also also really like The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast, the Breakfast Club. Club. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... I recently watched The Breakfast Club on a plane. I was like flying to LA from New York and yeah. I watched it. I was like, oh, wow, look at that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's also part of the, I call it the Brad Pack. The Brad coming out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Earlier. And I saw like, what's interesting though, a lot of the people that were in the Breakfast Club, they made mm -hmm. other films together. Oh, they were made like, so many. Yeah. Lots of some like, John Hughes like, films. Yeah, you know, exactly. Sixteen Candles or was that uh, St. Elmo's Fire? Right? Yeah. As well. Yeah. No, yeah. I really enjoyed the Breakfast Club. Uh, other than that, I think Karate Kid. Is there yeah. somewhere for me Karate. too? <laughs> yeah. uh, I love Karate Kid. I love the Terminator, a very the Terminator, yeah. Reagan film, yeah, obviously. No, right. And then and there's like a little bit of travel in time in, um, in I mean, Terminator as well. Look, and I know we've kind of mentioned like Reagan films as well, but I mean, the mm -hmm. whole idea, I mean, the whole idea about Reagan cinema is being able to go back and change your past, right? Right. I mean, that was the whole thing about it. And, you know, again, wherever your politics lie, he ran on this idea of going, you know, Let's go back to the good old days. Right. right? We've heard that recently too. I know. Uh, but he ran on all that. And, you know, what's kind of interesting is that you had Jimmy Carter, who, again, whatever your politics is like, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. the whole Iran crisis, right? The hostage right. crisis, you know, people kind of viewed Americans differently. And the Termin is a really interesting film because it kind of states if we stayed the course, right? becomes destruction yeah Hawkless, the future right? would so the yeah right they <laughs> go back into the 80s to like change the course of time uh, yeah. and that's what a lot of films during the reagan cinema was trying to do right kind of you know showing us if we don't stay the course we have to change it right we have to go back mm -hmm. and we have to change something if we want to be those hard bodies that kind of representation of a tough masculine what does masculinity mean again yeah so terminator is there and i believe i had one more that would be and this, I believe, came right at the beginning of the 80s. So it wasn't exactly a Reagan film, but it always showed movies mimicking what, what life was. Uh, Raging Bull, I believe, was 1980. Raging Bull, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Raging Bull, again, right? All mm -hmm. about <laughs> masculine. Yeah. You know, literally, it's about what is masculinity in that film. So, I mean, it's funny you mentioned uh, the Terminator because it's like, that's when like a lot of like new filmmakers were like coming, oh, yeah. you know, into it. Like James Cameron, I think that's like one Jim of... Jim Cameron, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one of his first... Uh, films. Let's talk about the top 10 highest grossing films that came out in the okay. 80s. Right? You have a list, right? Yeah, I have, I have the list. <laughs> so the first one, it's E.T., you know, by okay. Steven Spielberg. Number two, Star Wars, 
mm-hmm. Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Number three, Star Wars again. The Empire Strikes Back. Number four, yeah. Batman. Okay. Number five. Hard Body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hard Body. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Number six, Ghostbusters. Number seven, Beverly Hills Cop. Mm-hmm. Number eight, your favorite, Back to the Back Future. To the future. <laughs> number nine, and Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. And then number yep. ten, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. What's interesting in that list though is like four of them were directed by Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and I and I'm looking at like the list of like a lot of the movies that came out in the in the eighties. You know, Steven mm-hmm. Spielberg, you know, directed them or even oh, yeah. do some of them. It's like, like he was like the filmmaker. Oh, absolutely. I mean, of the 80s. <laughs> you know as well as I do, right? Going to films, basically going to film schools because yeah. of Steven Spielberg <laughs> and George Lucas and all of them, right? Some of his films also were nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. I mean, I think obviously, yeah, box office and awards really kind of dictate stuff. I always think like the Oscars, they don't get, they get a lot of things wrong, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> uh, but like what I do think that they do sometimes is they do bring kind of light on films that, you know, maybe no one would have seen. Like one that comes to mind, didn't get nominated for an Oscar, but was uh, All Is Lost with Robert Redford. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people went to watch that film because it was getting a lot of buzz. And I think stuff like that, you know, yeah. or even like Aquafina's new film coming out now, right? The Farewell. Yeah. It's getting a lot of buzz. But, you know, maybe if, if it wasn't getting that kind of award yeah, buzz, totally. maybe. Yeah, it's already getting a lot, a lot of buzz. Yeah. Um, so now we can talk a little bit about the films that were actually, that actually won Best Pictures in the <laughs> 80s. You probably know like most of them. I always forget years. That's years? my oh, okay. years. But remember we were sitting and we were like just rounding off films and I was saying, oh, that one for that and that one for that. But yeah. 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 So Ordinary People won in 1981. Eating for, Raging Bull. Yeah. For 1980. Very interesting. Yeah. Would you have preferred Raging Bull? Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I, I love Raging Bull. I actually really liked Ordinary People. Mm-hmm. I think it was a fantastic film. And I thought it was really interesting how, and I, I thought it was really interesting, uh, what's his name, Timothy Hutton? Mm-hmm. He won supporting actor that year for Ordinary People when he was very clearly the star of the film. But yeah. okay, a little, little, <laughs> little category fraud there. And Donald Sutherland didn't get nominated. He's like the only one from the entire yeah. cast that didn't get nominated. Yeah, I think Ordinary People was a, was a really, I, I really enjoyed that film. I thought great yeah. for Redford finally to get an Academy Award. But Raging Bull was bringing up also a lot of, a lot of interesting questions and i mean like like i said it's one of my one of the films i think are yeah. really good so i don't know if they were doing that in the 80s though but sometimes it's like the studio like like you know just like they did it with like green book and and marshall ali oh. like where they would have like someone who's probably playing the lead but they would submit them as oh they, as, they've been doing that a lot <laughs> yeah as the like like the supporting uh, because they they i mean it's all it's all a campaign Right, like the right. Oscar is all is all a campaign. They they actually got in campaign. I right, it was Monique when she won for Precious. Right, she won supporting supporting actress. actress yeah. Right, but she went on stage and says, you know, thanks for the Academy for recognizing someone who didn't go out. Yeah, and yeah. like campaign. Yeah, right? there was there was a lot of like yeah. controversies uh, with that. I mean, they they campaign a lot. You know, they always they always put actors where they think they have the best chance. I think an interesting conversation for this year coming up would be Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. Right, for mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I know. Right, where are they gonna? They're gonna both go. Lead? Yeah, they should. Yeah, they are should they probably just split both them. Go for <laughs> I don't know. Well, I haven't seen the film yet, but I've, yeah. just, I've heard this is an interesting conversation. Yeah. So let's continue on that. And then you know which film that won in nineteen eighty two? A nineteen eighty two or for nineteen eighty one? It's still uh, Chariots of the of Chariots Fire. of Fire. Yeah, yeah. That was and a good then nineteen eighty three Gundy. They took ten years to make. Gundy, <laughs> so they better win, right? <laughs> A lot of people were upset that Gandhi won because I believe that was the years of E.T. as well, right? E.T. was kind of the favorite. It was kind yeah, of the, was the year home, of like, you know, everyone was like, wanted that to win, but then Gandhi went and won. But I mean, Gandhi is a, it's a long film. It's it's a watch. Yeah, because I, yeah, I know E.T. came out in 1982. So I yeah. believe it was E.T. that was it, that year too. Yeah. But Gandhi's a great film and Rich Attenborough, you know, won an Academy Award for directing for that. And yeah. Ben Kings. I mean, it's, it's a, it was a fantastic film. So. Yeah. And then 1984, Terms of Endearment. Yeah. 1985, Amadeus. Amadeus. Um, 1986, Out of Africa. Out of Africa. Meryl yeah. Streep. You know, it's an interesting film, but I, I think if you if you take any stock in Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. if anybody, if anybody takes I know, that, I know. It was like I think it's like one of the 70. lowest. Yeah, I think it's like one of the lowest <laughs> rated films to like I know. win 
an academy like that and like Cimarron, right? That was like yeah, the two saw, lowest. Yeah, I recently saw the the, the ratings for Out of Africa and Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I don't know if that's like, true, but I'm like, that's kind of low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so 1987 Platoon, mm-hmm. 1988 The Last Emperor, and in yeah. 1989 Rain Man, and in 1990 Driving Miss Daisy. Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, for you know came out in 1989, which, you know, a lot of people feel like at least Do the Right Thing should have been nominated for for that year. But Do the Right Thing was great. And the thing about Do the Right Thing is nobody does the right thing. Right? <laughs> and I think was it one of our professors actually said that. Which one would you say is like your favorite? Amadeus. Amadeus is, right, is, is one of my favorites there. But like, you know, Gandhi and a lot of them, like I said, they're all kind of really great films. A lot of, again, films that were nominated. Back to Future was not nominated, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So yeah, Alex Cox was also like one of the one of the new filmmakers at mm-hmm. uh, at that time. I mean, of course, Batman came out mm-hmm. in ni- in nineteen eighty nineteen. Tim Burton, mm-hmm. I think they like they did pretty well as well. I guess it's like it's been like happening because like now nowadays like when a, when it's a superhero movie mm-hmm. like it's probably gonna do well like at least like the Marvel ones and stuff like that. But like you know mm-hmm. it's interesting to see that even back in nineteen eighty nine in mm-hmm. the eighties that films, superhero films were, you know, already doing, doing pretty well. I can't remember when was like the first like official like kind of superhero film. Well, came Batman out. came out then. There was an original Spider-Man that I think came out in the 80s. Oh, really? I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, I'm blanking on when. Yeah, was it? Was the, yeah, was it a cartoon? Or no, there was an actual live action Spider-Man. Live action Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, that came, it came out in like the 19, it was the 70s, yeah. You know, something like that, like maybe the seventies. But yeah, I not a lot of people saw it correctly. <laughs> but yeah, there was something back then. But yeah, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay, so what kind of legacy would you like to live behind? Oh, it's like as a, a filmmaker. As a filmmaker? Well, I loved I love kind of telling you what you told you my my favorite films from the eighties, especially. You know, definitely I love stories about people going on journeys. Mm-hmm. Right. People going on journeys of some sort of discovery of some sort. You know, my whole thing, I don't know. I was, I just want to, I guess my legacy, I just want to make stuff that people want to see at some point. Maybe, you know, something that is important to somebody. But I'm not so big on the whole legacy thing. Le- yeah, I'm not so big on the whole <laughs> legacy thing. Just want to make something that people want to see and we'll see kind of go from there. Yeah, maybe in the end people say, okay, that was an interesting, that's an interesting right. piece of work. That's, you know, maybe it's something that he said something different than, that I, than right. what I think is out there. So... And, so, yeah. <laughs> and then what are what are like your your favorite directors or like your favorite filmmakers, I would say. So filmmakers. I guess you can, because I know you read it as well. Yeah. So I guess you can put like, you know, editors there, maybe like two directors and like two editors. Sure. I mean, I love, in terms of directors, I love, uh, I mean, I'm a Scorsese. I love Scorsese, right? Yeah, uh, right. Big fan. I'm also a fan. I know I've told you this before, but I'm a fan <laughs> of the German director, Reiner von der Fassbender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, I've seen a lot of his films. I'm a big fan of his. I feel like most people would be like, Ooh, who's that? <laughs> right. No, but yeah, he's a... I know, but he's made like, you know... A different podcast, stuff. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole... That's a whole different <laughs> podcast. Uh, yeah, great, awesome director. Definitely check him out. And I definitely like editors like Thelma Schoonmaker, right? Who who mm-hmm. worked, of course, with uh, with Scorsese. You know, he she was... You know, I love their working relationship. You ever see like interviews with her? Mm-hmm. And they have like, you know, they talk about their working relationship. He comes in and always like works, you know, kind of edit together even. And I think that's... That's kind of fantastic. What's your favorite Scorsese film? Raging Bull, obviously. Raging Bull. Is yeah, well, that's one. Uh, but I'm in the kind of weird place. I actually really like The Departed. The Departed. Okay. I know most Scorsese fans are like groaning when I say right. that, but like I actually like The Departed. I think it was actually a really, really great film. You know, I'm a fan, of course, of, you know, I like Goodfellas What's... and Raging Bull, as yeah. we said. Even, you know, Last Temptation of Christ, I actually really like that too. I think it was a really great film. I'm going to be the kind of, you know, odd one out. I'm saying The Departed is actually my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, it came out in like 2006, right? Recent, but I, I mean, it's, yeah, a couple of things that would change, but awesome editing, awesome story, awesome acting. Yeah, right. was totally into it. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's it for today, folks. Don't forget to subscribe. And this was Perry Pierre. And my guest for today was Peter Ellenis. Thank you.